Volkswagen, world's biggest car company, says that between 2032 and 2035, it will stop producing any ICE cars in Europe. Depending on infrastructure, the rest of the world will be next, starting with the US and China. Volkswagen sales board director Klaus Zermer explained that competitors who sell cars in Europe, for example, will have to deal with less complexity when it comes to transformation because of the clear political guidelines. Also in April, the European Union announced that it was increasing its carbon em emission reduction objective to 55% from 40% by 2030 and it's aiming for zero net emissions by 2050. Despite the company's plans to exit the internal combustion engine market, Zelmer told that these engines are still very useful and needed by a lot of people who have long distances to travel frequently. The company will invest in developing better drives, more efficient ones, and by 2030 Volkswagen aims at 70% EV production for Europe. It's not the only car company to make these types of promises. Ford promised to invest $1 billion to transform its factory in Cologne, Germany. It also said that by 2030, will be selling only EVs in Europe. GM set the date for 2035 for light duty vehicles, sharing carbon neutral projects for 2014, along with Honda, which only has one EV at the time of this recording with Prolog, the new SUV, just being in the making. GM also just announced a uh, cheap Chinese GM, GM Wuling car at around $4,000. Finally, Volkswagen set the date for 2050 for going carbon neutral. Another company that's carbon neutral from day one, it's Veloretti. Veloretti has been around since uh, 2013. It's been producing bikes in uh, the Netherlands. The name sounds Italian and that's because the company founder Zender, which would have been a great name for a bike company, Zender told that he was inspired by Italian style in developing these bikes. He loved a moped, Velocifero. Part of that bike style is in this bicycle, that moped style. Usually Velocifero bikes were cheap but very well built for the Netherlands at around 400 euros, close to 700 euros when fully spec'd up. The new bike, the electric one, which looks okay, would be costing uh, over 2,400 euros, which is 400 euros more expensive than the Van Move, which is sold worldwide. Veloretti has only three markets, Belgium, the Netherlands and Germany. It doesn't have many things over Van Moof. It has a belt drive, less range. Van Moof can go to 100 miles in the lightly assisted mode. Veloretti can go to 80 miles. Top speed is set to 25 kilometers and it's achievable while pedaling. You can pedal less and go as fast but use more energy or you can pedal more and use more of your energy and less of the bikes. It's a substantial bike weighing at 21 kilos, twice or three times the weight of a really really light bike. It has GPS, 3G, 4G, it gets over the air updates, a small screen, a small bell, hydraulic brakes, an automatic gear shifter, it will shift the gears for you depending on your drive and what your preferences in the bike app, similar to Van Move. It has an integrated light system, a removable battery, which the Van Move doesn't have. Van Move has an attachable battery that can power the unremovable one. So you can charge only the bike battery and leave the bike in the garage. You don't have to carry the bike to your apartment or house inside. And it's also the second bike, first being the Van Move, to be Apple Find My certified. You will be able to find the bike in the vast Find My uh, network which Apple provides. The founder, Zender, claims that these are better bikes than the Van Move with a 0.8% failure rate to the Van Move's close to 10%. Still, I prefer the 4,000 euros in my pocket and the better looking Van Move. The bike is still very cheap when you're talking electric bikes and it's one of the better looking. Supposedly, it will go up in prices. At around $600, Lenovo just announced a 13 inch Android tablet external monitor thingy. I used to own a 16 inch Asus external monitor Android tablet thingy that you could draw on like this one with an HD screen, it was, in my experience, trash after two years. It looks nice, it has a stainless steel stand. If you're in a market for an Android tablet, the 7, 8 or 11 inches are far better suited for tablety things, even drawing, it's more comfortable on a smaller screen than the 13 inch one that you have to carry in a bag. The next headlines reads, Tesla recalls 
285,000 cars from China, 250 of them being made there, and 35 or around that sum made in the US. It's a huge recall for the company. And technically, traditionally, when you read recall, you understand that the car company has to actually recall the cars to get the cars from the owners in their shops to repair and give back or give another car. This recall is not technically a recall. It was fixed with an over the air update like those that you get weekly on a Tesla. The recall was around a fault in the car, which meant that some users were accidentally turning on cruise control and the car was speeding up. There were some protests around clients not being treated nice, which I can see. And if you stepped in a Tesla shop, you could also see customer satisfaction and customer care are not top 20. Nope, not at all. Recently, in the last months, the Pentagon was leaking steadily, but surely UFO data documents. More and more pilots and sane people from the Navy and Army saw UFOs in the last years. The Pentagon has a branch which investigates UAPs not UFOs because it wouldn't have sounded serious or real. UAPs means unidentified aerial phenomena. The things that are flying don't have to be flying objects or UFOs. A lot of people saw pills or flying thingies, pilots in the air talking with each other. Dude, I was seeing that thing that flies around three kilometers in my face. Yes. Dude, do you see that? Yes, we are all awake. Yes, and we are seeing some career ending things in our proximity. Yes, pilots and serious people usually don't like engaging in UFO talk, but still UAPs, not UFOs, are a thing. To summarize the Pentagon report, the Pentagon said that those are not other beings or extraterrestrials, but we don't know what they are. What we know is that those are not UFOs or extraterrestrials. For the Pentagon to be able to say that, one of one things must happen. <laughs> Imagine that. You live in an area where bear intrusions are a common sight. Twice, thrice a month, a bear enters your yard or somebody's yard, eats a lot of the garbage, makes a lot of mess. The bear is filmed, photographed, people know about the bear. Why night you wake up with your yard turned upside down and you see a thing that it's eating everything. You don't know what that thing is and when you Tell people the story, you tell them, dude, it wasn't a bear. For you to be able to tell people, dude, it wasn't a bear, you have to know how a bear looks like. If you don't know how a bear looks like, you can't tell people that's not a bear because you don't know how a bear looks like. For the Pentagon to be able to tell people that's not a UFO, that's not an extraterrestrial, the Pentagon must know how one looks. I'm just saying stay in space. China with its Zhurong rover. In March, NASA released audio for its Perseverance rover, firing lasers on the surface of Mars. Now China with Zhurong rover has released audio of what it says is the rover arriving on the red planet and getting settled in. China also posted selfies of the rover, which looks Cute. Zhurong landed on Mars in May after orbiting since February. It was on China's Tianwen 1 mission. It landed on Utopia Planitia, a smooth plane where NASA's Viking 2 landed touchdown in 1976. In February, Perseverance rover also landed on Mars, but a thousand miles away on Jezero Crater. The two rovers are not likely to ever meet. Zhurong rover has a 90 day mission, which it's almost halfway done. After that, it will continue roaming Mars for the years to follow. For example, Curiosity rover landed on Mars in 2012 and it was recently seen on Mount Mercury by an orbiter. The current pandemic seems to have died down the madness a bit, but people do still get sick. In the last month, a couple of surveys or studies have been done around sick people. There's one in Norway, a small one, only 300 people were involved between the ages of 16 and 60. On those, it was discovered that around 50-60% to had lingering symptoms after being sick, even if they didn't have strong symptoms when the illness occurred and didn't even have to go to the hospital. And for 25%, even after six months, symptoms were lingering. The most common symptoms were disturbed taste 
or smell, difficulty breathing, fatigue, difficulties concentrating and memory problems. Another study from California published in March that got involved 1,500 people showed similar findings with people aged 16 to 30 suffering cognitive issues, memory loss, difficulty concentrating. That age bracket, it's important because in that age bracket, you are most likely to be in school and need your mind to be clear. Finally, another study based on 2 million sick people showed that around 20 to 30 percent of the sick people that had mild or no symptoms had lingering symptoms for a few months, were hospitalized a month after COVID for another issue or the following months, and also had cognitive issue around a quarter of those people. That's it for today. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And until next time, beware of the falling sweatshirts. <laughs>